Transcribed. Good evening. This is Ronald Coleman, inviting you to join Mrs. Coleman and me for the next half hour when our sponsor, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presents the Halls of Ivy. If you like good beer, do as millions of people are doing all over the country. Ask for Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Schlitz tastes so good to so many people that it's the largest selling beer in America. It has to be fine to be first. And now, the Halls of Ivy. Welcome again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. It's one of those nights that makes home a real haven. Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, president of Ivy, is thankful to be home at last after a dinner meeting of the board to don his dressing gown and slippers and join his wife, Victoria, before the fireplace. Ah, that's better. Now, blow winds and crack your cheeks. Rage, blow. You cataracts and hurricanes, spout till you have drenched our steeple. We could use a couple more shingles in our steeple. I've got three pans catching the water in the kitchen. <laughs> well, did you have a boisterous evening with the boys? <laughs> uh, rather, let us say, a boring meeting with the board. <laughs> All their dinner meetings follow the same revolting pattern. First, the preliminary and quite false inquiry into one another's health, mm. with no one listening to the answers. Uh, then, a few firm opinions of our national administration, and then, a fruit cocktail. Ah, the good old fruit cocktail, without which any dinner party would be a much happier one. Oh, it's not the fruit cocktail I object to. In fact, I rather like it. No, it's that, uh, uh, that inevitable, omnipresent, unavoidable, and uninspired one-half of a maraschino cherry. <laughs> Why a half? Can't anyone afford a whole maraschino cherry? <laughs> now, the fruity resources of this plundered planet so far reduced. No, no. It, it's a matter of stability, darling. Uh, yes. You know, whole ones roll around. A half cherry stays put. <laughs> I know, but I couldn't keep my mind on the business side. Why not? That half of a cherry. <laughs> I counted the members present. Nine of us. Nine half cherries, or four and a half cherries, accounted for. <laughs> Where was the other half of a cherry? <laughs> what are they saving it for? A fruitcake? <laughs> well, do they think that I... I'll take it. That, that, that'll be something Wellman just remembered he should have said at the meeting, but didn't. Hello? Dr. Hall speaking. Evening, Dr. Hall. This is Warren. Oh, good evening, Professor. How are you? Satisfactory. Say, maybe you can do me a favor. You know a passage from Santa Ana about life flowing and stuff which begins, uh, seeds, blood, and tears are liquid? Mm, it's vaguely familiar. Have you got Santa Ana in your house? Yes, yes, I'm sure there's one tucked away in the library. Good. Some light-fingered member of the literati barred mine. I don't remember who. <laughs> I'd like to complete passage from an 8 o'clock class tomorrow morning. You mind if I totter over and pick up your copy? Well, I'd be delighted to see you, Professor, but in a storm like this, only the wayward daughters of stern fathers are being driven out. <laughs> but if you if you want to hold on a minute, I'll read the passage to you. Fine, fine, if it's not too much bother. Uh, not at all, just hold on. I'll talk to him while you hunt, Toddy. He's my oldest boyfriend. Good, Vicky. Hello, Professor Warren. Why, good evening, Mrs. Hall. Where have you been hiding? You promised to drop by and see us during the holidays. Now, I've got a lot of blank paragraphs in my diary. Oh, my apologies, Mrs. Hall. But you see, I usually crawl into solitude on such occasions. Christmas, I hang up an old sock and put a horn in it, which I take out on New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> at the stroke of midnight, I look in the mirror and blow one toot at myself and go to bed. <laughs> well, sometimes you bring it over here. I, I never heard you blow your own horn, Professor. <laughs> well, you can put that down to natural shyness and shortness of wind, lady, 
Not to any lack of conceit. Otherwise, Mickey. I wouldn't even... Oh, Mickey. Oh, excuse me, Professor. Yes, Dottie? Have you seen Santa Yana lately? Well, no, dear. Uh, we'll call you back, Professor Warren. All right. Yeah, there's a philosopher named Santayana lost in our library, and we're forming a party. All right, bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, here, here we are. Oh, oh, did you hang up? I just found it. Oh. Now, if I can locate that that passage, it must be in the uh, essay on... Let me see some... Oh, oh, here. Here it is. Uh, now, what's his phone number? Well, that's odd. I've called him up often enough. Well, uh, I'll look it up. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Cedar 2655. Uh, no, that doesn't sound like it. I remember that much too easily. It must be wrong. <laughs> of course, I, I know it's ridiculous. And it's the last thing anybody would ever be caught at. And I'm a flighty woman even to suggest it. But how about trying the phone book? <laughs> uh, no, no, not for Warren. He'd insist on being unlisted if he were the head of the fire department. <laughs> well, let's find out. I like to look through the phone directory anyway. The one book I can lay down any time without wondering what happens next. Um, <laughs> war Nick, War Knock, War Now, War Pack. Here, uh, here we are, Warren. Warren, is it Joseph? Yeah, that's right, Joseph Warren. So he isn't listed, nay, nay, nay. Here he is, Joseph Warren. Cedar, 7211. Ah, good. Thank you, darling. Cedar. C. E. What was that? Cedar what? Oh, toddy. Now. Oh, knock, oh, pack, Warren, it's all the way through. Miss <laughs> Cedar, seven? Seven. Two? Two. One, one. One, one. Hello? Hello? Oh. Uh, sorry to have kept you waiting. Have you got a pencil handy? Sure, sure. All right, here it is. Uh, seeds, blood, and tears are liquid. Nothing else is so poignant as what passes and flows, like music and love. Huh? <laughs> and if this irreparable fluidity is sad, anything stark and arrested is sadder. Life is compelled to flow, and things must flow with it. Or, like Lot's wife, in the petrified gesture of refusal, remain to muck their own hopes. Uh, that's what you wanted, isn't it? Watch wife. Hey, listen, Mac. I'll go along with a gag any time, but I'm rushed tonight, see? There's six customers waiting and six Warren burgers on the griddle. Warren burgers? Well, to whom am I talking? This is Joe Warren's diner. If you won't come to us, we'll come to you. I'll so put in a bun. Now, what will you have? Oh, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, nothing tonight, thank you. Wrong, Warren. Yes, this one sells something called Warren Burgers. A banquet in a bun. <laughs> I'll wager there's not half a maraschino cherry within sneering distance. <laughs> Sounds interesting. I'm sorry you didn't order a couple. Well, I thought of it, believe me. <laughs> but first things first, darling. What is Professor Warren's phone number? Oh, it must be somewhere in your desk. Let's look now. Cedar. Cedar. I'm sure it was cedar. Uh, or was it walnut? Or maple? Was it evergreen or deciduous? Yes, here's your address book. R S T U V W. Ah, Professor J. Warren, 82, Piazza Barberini, Rome, Italy. Oh, now, Vic. <laughs> uh, that, that's a leftover from Warren's sabbatical leave in 1937. Now, wait, here, here's a... I'm up, I'll go. Ah, uh, Professor Warren. Evening, Dr. Hall, Mrs. Hall. Oh, come in, Professor. You must be frozen. In the recent jargon of our undergraduates, baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> Thank you. We'll sit down. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you had to walk over in this weather, Professor. I was trying to get you on the phone. Yes, I know. You see, Burgess always takes over the moment I hang up. You should see my phone bill. You'd think I was the voice of America. <laughs> <laughs> Burgess? Now, who's he? He's a her. Oh. It's Miss Burgess. She's my housekeeper. I'm willing her to the Smithsonian Institute. <laughs> They'll hang her up on the ceiling under the port wing of the Spirit of St. Louis. <laughs> did you find your Santa Ana? Yes, I did, and the quotation. Good, that's worth two blocks in the blizzard. Well, now that you're here, take off your coat and mittens and stay a while. Thank you, Mrs. Hall. I wanted to speak to you two anyway. You busy Saturday night? No, I, uh, I, I don't think so, are we, Vicky? 
Well, the uh, Browning Society wanted you to read for them. Let them get Browning. <laughs> They've had guest speakers deader than he is. <laughs> well, <laughs> well it, it appears we have a free evening. Good. I thought we might have a quiet dinner, just the three of us, at Tony's out on the River Road. You know, I'm leaving Ivy next month. Leaving? Uh -huh. Oh, William, you didn't tell me. Well, I was hoping he wouldn't. I made him an offer to stay on. Mrs. Hall, I am superannuated. In Navy parlance, I'm to be decommissioned, coated with cosmoline, and nudged up the river to join the rest of the mothball fleet. <laughs> I am disqualified because of old age. Oh, now, you know it's not a question of disqualification, Professor. The retirement age is automatic. It's certainly wrong in your case, but regulations are never made for exceptions. And you're always an exception, aren't you, Professor Warren? Why, you've built quite a reputation on it. Mrs. Hall, I've always believed that if you travel with the crowd, you're liable to get your mind picked. <laughs> but I think this retirement thing might be a good idea in my case. Out of sheer inertia, I'd probably have stayed on here till it dried up and blew around the campus. Dirtying the front steps of Clarence Wellman Hall on rainy afternoons. <laughs> well, in that case, there would be more brains outside than inside. <laughs> now, what are your plans, Professor? Oh, nothing definite. Might go to Tibet. Tibet? That forbidden land where the foreign devil is not permitted to set foot. Unless he is one of 4,000 writers with camera and ballpoint pen who goes home and writes a book on how impossible it would be for anybody else to do what he did. <laughs> Well, personally, I wouldn't go any place I had to get to on a high llama. Uh, don't you mean a low llama, Vicky? <laughs> you visit the high one. Oh. <laughs> uh, before you uh, ride off into the sunset, Professor, I want to ask a favor. You will help Professor Dickinson get acquainted with your department, won't you? You know, he's just getting settled, and there'll be a lot you can tell him. Yes, there's plenty I could tell Professor Dickinson if he'd listen. But he's not interested in my ideas, and frankly, I don't like his either. Well, since you put it that way, uh, frankly, uh, perhaps it's just as well to skip it. It is just as well. We'd wind up behind the science building at dawn. Pistols for two and breakfast for one. <laughs> I've taken up enough of your evening. Just hand me my coat and mittens, and I'll be on my way. Yes, here you are. Thank you. No, no, Mrs. Hall, don't come to the door. You'll freeze. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Good night Professor Warren. Don't forget about Saturday, Doctor, about 7. Oh, thanks very much. We'll be looking forward to it. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I love that man, but he never stays put. He just gets started talking, and then he pops up and runs off. <laughs> now, you know, I never dreamt it was possible that Warren could reconcile himself to retirement so easily. He's an old war horse, and I thought he'd die rather than leave his table. Oh, Toddy, here's the Santayana. He's forgotten to take oh, it. Oh, you better give it to me. I'll drop it by his house. Now, where did I put my overshoes? Oh, you're not going out in this weather. Yes, I am. I've been thinking seriously about those banquets on buns, those Warren burgers. <laughs> <laughs> and I've come to a decision. Oh, well, but that's quite different. <laughs> Make it do with everything, darling. You hurry back. <laughs> So, you forgot your key again, huh? Uh, I beg your pardon? Oh, I thought it was the professor. Who is it? Isn't Professor Warren in? You haven't answered my question yet. Who are you? Well, I'm Dr. Hall, Miss Burgess. Oh, that's different. I know you. Come in, doctor. I thought the professor was over to your house. Well, he was. I thought he was coming back here. Oh, that man out gallivanting around the town for half the night again. He'll catch his death. For the last month, he's been wandering around Ivy at all hours of the night like he'd never seen it before. Ah, Professor Warren has a deep affection for Ivy. Then why are you throwing him out? Good heavens, we're not throwing him out, Miss Burgess. None of us want to see him go. But after all, how can you blame him for wanting to travel and, and see some of the world now that he has the freedom to do so? See the world? Why, he hasn't even got bus fare from here to Kansas City. <laughs> he hasn't? Well, since you know so much about him, perhaps you can tell me what his real plans are. He's moving in with his sister and her no-good husband up at Rock County. He's got no place else to go. Do you think he's too old for his job, too? No. He's merely too old for our regulations. Well, that needn't mean the end of things. 
There's a place for him here at Ivy. He can be a visiting professor as long as he'll stay. But you know as well as we do that nobody's ever been able to force him to do anything. It must be his choice. Well, I know one thing. He can't just sit here looking out the window at the cemetery where he'll be buried someday. Only he won't be buried. Says he wants to be cremated in Emerson Hall. <laughs> cremated in Emerson Hall? Yes. Oh. Says it'll be the first time he was ever warm in that building. <laughs> When there's beer on your mind, your best thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. It was Goethe, the great poet of a bygone day, who said, One ought, every day at least, to hear a little song, read a good poem, see a fine picture, and if it were possible, to speak a few reasonable words. Well, taking our cue from Mr. Goethe, let's speak a few reasonable words on the subject of beer. In beer, as in a poem, a picture, or a song, there can be no substitute for quality. And there can be no higher tribute to the quality of Schlitz beer than this. So many people like the taste of Schlitz so well that they've made it the largest selling beer in America. Yes, the taste of Schlitz is winning more and more new friends every day. So if it's been some time since you've tasted Schlitz beer, you owe yourself that pleasure again. Next time, ask for Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Then you, too, will discover it has to be fine to be first. As we return to Ivy, Dr. and Mrs. Hall are the dinner guests of Professor Warren at a roadhouse a few miles outside of town. How am I doing, Mrs. Hall? Bet you didn't know I danced so divinely, did you? Well, this is the first chance you've given me to find out. Well, it's not something I usually talk about, but I once wanted to be a ballet dancer. Twinkle Toes Warren, the boy in the velvet pants. <laughs> Paint a lovely picture. What stopped you? Too many feet. <laughs> In a more rational moment, I swapped my patent leather pumps for a set of Plutarch. Oh, oh, what happened to the boy who got the pumps? He owns a filling station outside of Baltimore. That's fate, I guess. If you're born to the pumps, you're gonna get them. <laughs> oh, say I'm sorry that's over. Dibs on the next waltz, Mrs. Hall. <laughs> By all odds, the most talented couple on the floor. There was a time, Dr. Hall, when Irene Castle was my favorite dancer. But in her foxiest trot days, she couldn't hold a candle to your wife. Oh, <laughs> Irene Castle, how long ago was that? Oh, don't ask me for any contemporary gates, Mrs. Hall. Dates, I mean. <laughs> if you ask me for those of Constantine and Theodosius, I could give them to you. But as far as my own personal chronicle goes, I don't even know what year I was born. <laughs> what? You, you do Well, wait a minute. Then how do you know you're 65? I don't. Never had a birth certificate. Or if I did, I lost it. During the First World War, when I had to produce one, I discovered that the town hall of Centerville, Ohio, had long since burned down. So I just picked a good round birth year, and now I'm stuck with it. <laughs> Looks like it was not a winning number, either. Oh, I'm not so sure. Professor, you've just set your clock back. Hmm? I'll take this up with the Board of Governors tomorrow. <laughs> For all anybody knows, you're a boy of 21. Well, thanks, Doctor. <laughs> Thank you very much, but it's no good. I don't think I'd enjoy borrowed time. Well, time is community property. Help yourself. No, I appreciate your good intentions, but you don't know how well off you're going to be without me. This Professor Dickinson... There's a boy you won't have any trouble with. He'll go to all the teas, make all the proper little speeches, be nice to all the right people. All the social he... amenities here are well enough taken care of, but the heart of Ivy is the classroom. And that's where your heart has always been. Right now, my heart's in the Highlands. Boy, you, you told us you were going to Mexico City or all points south. Well, I, I've changed my plans again. I've decided to go down to Rio first. 
Thought I might get myself a cabana on the beach and just bask in the sun. Funny thing, I don't believe I've ever basked. <laughs> well, I admit the, the prospect is very attractive with all the snow we've had this winter. Well, when you're approaching winter yourself, that's the time you start looking for summer everywhere. That's why I'm heading south. I say I'm a fine host, spending the whole evening talking about myself. Here, let me fill your glasses. It's milk from contented vineyards. <laughs> thank, oh, well, you. thank you. Just, uh, well, well, here's a toast. Courtesy of sorrow. To him whose elastic and vigorous thought keeps pace with the sun, the day is a perpetual morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs> Dr. Hall, may I please have this dance? Of course, darling. Will you excuse us, Professor? Well, this one you may have, Doctor. But remember, the waltz is mine. Toddy, we can't let him leave Ivy. Yes, but how to make him stay? Yes, if only he weren't being so gay about it all. It'd be much more like him to get into a fury at you and Ivy and everybody letting him go. We don't want to let him go. We're only... We're... Vicky, that's the answer. You've given me the only good idea I've had all day. <laughs> You think they'd throw us out if I kissed you? Well, if they do, you can kiss me again on the sidewalk. Excuse me, Professor. Uh, I'm on the phone, Vicky. Uh, yes, go ahead, Professor Dickinson. And what did he say? Hmm, he did? <laughs> well, well, so far, so good. You've been very cooperative, Professor, and we're all obliged to you. As long as you're willing to be the heavy, I think we can make Professor Warren see the light. Yes, yes, I'll let you know. Goodbye. Vicky, I think we're in for a big win. Oh, that's what we wanted, wasn't it? <laughs> but we still don't know which way it's going to blow. Ah, Dickinson's already got the first blast, and it came from the expected direction. He said it was a real twister. Mm. Oh, by the way, darling, you wanted me to remind you. Did you send the telegram? Which one? For the 100th anniversary of Northwestern University. Oh, yes, I sent one to Rocky Miller and one to President Daniel Marsh of Boston University. It's his silver anniversary and he's retiring. What'd you say? Did you quote Washington's farewell to his men? Quote, so long, fellas, unquote. <laughs> no, no. I said, and I quote, Dear Dan, hail and farewell on your silver anniversary. Expect you to be snapped up immediately by private industry as the inventor of a silver product that can never be tarnished. Warmest regards, Bill Hall. Oh, that's nice. Yes, I'll get it. Yes? Good morning. I'd like to see the president. I'm Miss Burgess. You're Mrs. Hall. Pleased to meet you. Heard a lot about you. All good. <laughs> <laughs> William, there's someone here. Oh, Miss Burgess. Well, good morning. Won't you sit down? I've just come over to let you know that the professor's leaving on the three o'clock train today. You've got to stop him. Miss Burgess, that's exactly what we're hoping to do. Hope never stopped a railway train. Are you just going to sit back here and do nothing? Well, professor Warren has an excellent mind of his own. Uh... And now we'll undoubtedly hear him speak a piece of that mind. You mean he's here? Unless the wind's changed, he's at the door right now. Uh, 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 Vicky, Vicky, you and Mrs. Burgess run for cover. Yes, come into the kitchen with me until the weather clears up. It's just a local disturbance. Well, Professor Warren, come in, come in. You might as well know it, Dr. Hall. I have a ticket on the three o'clock train out of here today. But something happened this morning, a thing called Dickinson. Oh, something happened to Professor Dickinson? Something happened? The man's lost his mind. Have you any idea what that lemon head is planning to do to my history department? Mm, yes, I'm aware of his plan. You're not going to let him get away with it? I don't understand what you mean. I have the highest esteem for Professor Dickinson, both as a scholar and as an administrator. Oh, you have, have you? Uh-huh. Well, that's your job, I guess. You've got to please everybody. Professional etiquette. <laughs> well, I don't work here anymore, and I can speak my mind. If that man goes ahead with what he's doing, well, that's the end. Well, if you think it's that serious, Professor, I think you should give me more specific reasons. He's chopping the whole curriculum up into little bitty pieces. There isn't one single class to put them all together so they make any sense. What's history? History is continuity. Some people claim that history is a bunch of lies agreed upon, and maybe it is. 
But even so, without continuity, without relevance, history is a bunch of dates on cornerstones and names on tombstones. Oh, yes, 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 I know that, Professor, and I don't believe Dickinson would have any quarrel with it. And why hasn't he scheduled at least one class on the meaning and interpretation of history? Oh, as I understand it, he is omitting such a class at the present, uh, primarily because there is no one available here to teach it. Huh. Accordingly, he is going to concentrate on a more thorough grounding in the basic source material. Source material, my Aunt Mabel's bustle. <laughs> I know what he's really up to. He's a Toynbee man. Well, I'm not. Now, don't sell Toynbee short. He's probably the outstanding historian of our time. I didn't say he wasn't any good. Just don't agree with him. And I'd hate to see Ivy's history department represent only one point of view. That's not learning, that's memorizing. Well, I don't want any department at Ivy to present only one point of view. Well. However, if there is no one here to replace you and your approach, I can't expect him to teach history your way. Well, he's got three men in that department that could take over. They already have assignments. Oh, they have. Uh-huh. So Dickinson is going to muzzle them with that source material nonsense of his. You think I'd enjoy basking on the beach at Rio knowing this was going on? That the kids here were only getting one side of a subject? Your offer still go? Of course. I've never withdrawn it. I can stay on? No permanent status? No strings attached? That's right. All right, then. I'm back. <laughs> Welcome home, my friend. <laughs> I'll tell Dickinson to schedule your course, but naturally, I won't say anything about your opinion of his you ideas. You won't have to. He knows him. <laughs> now I'm off. Got to beat it down at the station and get a refund on my ticket. The fare to uh, South America, you know, is not just coat hangers. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Professor. So long. Say hello to Mrs. Hall. Last evening was very pleasant. I wish I could say as much for this morning. Dickinson is a lousy dancer. I couldn't hear everything, Toddy, but he certainly sounded angry. <laughs> he got so angry, he decided to stay here at Ivy. How do you feel? <laughs> Ruthless, conniving, despicable, and delighted. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you how glad I am, Doctor. The professor sounded like his old self. He hasn't hollered that loud in a whole year. How'd you ever do it? Oh, I just went back 65 years in my time machine. <laughs> yes, and burned down the city hall in Centerville, Ohio, with all the birth records. <laughs> Doctor, for a firebug, you burn a real hot match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Miss Burgess. Officiating at the accouchement of Professor Warren's new birth date makes me feel a little like a statistical midwife, but uh, uh, I'm glad he'll spend his newfound youth with us. It seems, as Sir Walter Raleigh said, that history has triumphed over time. When there's beer on your mind, your best thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. Here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good night, everyone. Good night. We'll be seeing you next week at this same time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. The other players were Verna Felton, Arthur Q. Bryan, and Sidney Miller. Tonight's script was written by Barbara and Milton Merlin and Don Quinn. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf, and presented transcribed by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who invites you to enjoy the Pulitzer Prize Playhouse on television on Friday nights. Ken Carpenter speaking. <laughs>